أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اللهم عدلنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم ارحمنا اللهم يسر ولا تعسر اللهم إنا نستغفرك ولا نتوب إليك يا الله we seek your forgiveness and we seek your pardon in dunya and akhirah ya Allah we are weak this give us strength we are misguided this guide us we are sick this give us health we are poor give us what help us to worship you with Amin. any question before we start anyone has question welcome new newcomers brothers and sisters any question anyone has question please Ramadan is very near. I'm not going to speak about Ramadan, but I just want to remind you about Ramadan. Ramadan is almost a month now from now, inshallah. Sha'ban, that's it. So please start talking about Ramadan to your children, to your family and friends. Talk about Ramadan. Not until Ramadan comes, a day or two we start talking about it. Now, alhamdulillah, Start planning your day in Ramadan. For example, try to have a plan. Inshallah, all prayers on time. Uh, sahur, reading a little bit for ants before you go to work or before you go to school. Reading a little bit of Quran when you come back from work or from school. Try to do one khatam in Ramadan, at least one. So 30 juz, 30, 30 days, 30 juz. One juz per day. Um, make sure no day of Ramadan goes without one sadaqah. At least one dollar, 30 ringgit, the least. So that you don't lose the pahala of donating. And I mean money, I don't mean uh, sadaqah of smile. This. That's, that should be the behavior anyway, <laughs> but the real sadaqah. Uh, share your food, share your thoughts, uh, read something nice, you find it nice, authentic, send it. That is sadaqa also through your WhatsApp or whatever you have, inshallah, social media. Uh, visit loved ones, visit the graveyard, the graveyard, go visit the graveyard once a week at least. Remind you because you're spiritually ready. Calculate your zakat, try to give your zakat in Ramadan. Uh, if you have chance to go to Umrah in Ramadan, please do, especially the last 10 days of Ramadan. These are things you do. Don't miss Taraweeh, no matter what. Don't miss Taraweeh in Jama'ah. Even when you are invited to have dinner somewhere or Iftar, make sure that Iftar has Jama'ah. Because people invite you to hotels and they don't even pray. Why should I go? If you don't even pray, why should I eat your food? This is very serious. You know Zabiha, Zabiha, what we call Zabiha, halal meat. If slaughtered by a Muslim who does not pray, you cannot eat his, his meat. Do you know that or not? Okay. Zabiha doesn't mean any Muslim can slaughter. Muslim practicing. If you know a Muslim who doesn't practice the salah and slaughters the meat, that, that Zabiha is not halal. But surely the owners of the guy who does it. That's the problem. No, no, no. No, I know you, I know you don't pray. And I eat your food? No, never. I know you don't pray. It's not like I don't know you. Wow. And you slaughtered this sheep for me, or this chicken. I cannot eat it. People think any Muslim can slaughter. No, there are many things we need to learn quickly before we go to the grave. Because it's halal and haram. Issue. Halal haram, you must know. You don't have to have PhD in halal haram, but you must know it. It's like you know where we are. Where you are is in Tamantun. You need to know where you are. You need to know which is halal, which is haram. <coughs> Permissible, dislike, maybe. But halal haram must be clear in your mind. Things like that. So in Ramadan, and 30 days will pass very fast. Just last, subhanAllah, we are in April, mid April. We just started 2018. We are already mid the fourth month, just yesterday. 
So Ramadan will pass. Eid will pass. Shawwal will pass. And our life will pass. That's why my dear sisters and brothers, remember Allah. Put Allah between your eyes, right here. Always. So that you don't go wrong. You get lost, you drift a little bit, but you come back. Because you are still with Allah. But when Allah is the last of your priorities, you are in big trouble, my friend. When do you realize that? When death comes. Any question? Please feel free, don't be shy. And then I finish the class and everybody wants to catch me and talk to me. <laughs> when I give you two hours, then you... Suddenly, the wahyu start coming to you when I'm about to leave. I don't want that wahyu. Just warm up. Yes, you need two hours to warm up. Oh, my God. Then you are diesel engine. <laughs> you are not... Yes, yes, sister. On behalf of someone who passed away, okay? Can we, uh, at one, like, let's say we want to treat the orphans, can we name a few of the doctors who have passed away when we give them No. Very good. Do I have to name someone when I'm about to give sadaqah on his behalf? Is that the question? Um, no, can I name a few okay. people? Few. Or even one. Or you don't have to, but you can. <laughs> it's not wajib. For example, you, you want to give something, okay? You want to give something to an orphan or anything. And you intend to give it on behalf of a loved one. One or a whole tribe. Let's say your father, mother, children, brothers, sisters, whoever. Dead or alive. You don't have to mention their names. Allah knows already your intention. You don't have to. But, Sheikh, can I mention... Say yeah, no problem. Please accept this on behalf of my parents, Haji, so and so, Hajja, so, no problem. But please don't make it long because the guy needs the sadaqah. Keep him hosted like that. <laughs> then he says, okay, I don't want it. Let me go. You know what I mean? Yes. You don't need to. You don't need to. But is it permissible? Yes. Yes. Allah already knows what you want to do. Khalas. He will accept, inshallah. Good. What else? Okay. Let's start. Two weeks ago, we started the tafsir, not the tafsir, the overlook of Surat Al-Kahf. Surat Al-Kahf. <coughs> Surah that every Muslim needs to read once a week at least. Okay? Surah al kahf is Surah 18. Surah 18. It's an amazing Surah because I told you there are four major, four major stories. Each story, there are four major stories. Each story talks about fitna, trial, trial. That may happen to you and me as an individual. Number one, the story of the people of the king. That's why it's called Surah al -Kah, the people of the king, youth. They were youth, most of them under the age of 18. The age, they were youngsters, Fitya. Fitya in Arabic, actually even less than 17. The second story is the story of the man with two Garden, meaning a lot of wealth. The third story is the story of Musa السلام, and the good man. The good man known as Khidr. Khidr. And the last and the last story is the story of King Dul Qadim. Dul King. Let me stress on this word, Dul Qarnay. Why I stress on his title? Because he, it's political. So, here, we said each story talk about test. So stories here means tests, trials, tribulations. Allah will not leave you alone. 
Allah will test you and me and every and you read that. Must accept that and get, get ready. You will not be left alone. Especially when your iman increases. Allah says, Alif Lam Mim Ahasiba Nasu Ayutraku Ayapulu Amanna Wahula Yuftanun. Alif Lam Mim. Do people think that they be left alone without any trial? When they say we are believers, you just said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Tests and trials will happen to you and to non Muslims, but more to Muslims, more to Mu'mins, more to Muttaqeen, more to Muhsin, more to Mukhlis, Mukhlas, and more to Siddiq, more to Prophet. The higher you go in Iman, the higher Allah will test you. These youngsters were tested in faith, the test of faith. And this is the most difficult one. Ask Allah not to test you in your faith. Because you may lose and lose big. If you lose faith, you lose chance to enter Jannah. The second one is the test of wealth. Very good. This is also difficult. Why? Because wealth, you are weak in front of it. In front of money, you are weak. And here, the test of ilmu. The test of knowledge. You may have knowledge, and Allah tests you with your knowledge. Here, the test of power. Test of power. You are powerful, and you know, you may lose your spiritual balance. When it comes to power, you have too much power, you cannot handle it. So you start committing injustice. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us, although they were youngsters, meaning they have every reason to delay faith. Like some idiots among us, what they say, I will stop praying at the age of 40. I will stop drinking alcohol at the age of 40. Who said that you're going to live until then? I'm young, let me do whatever I want. And not because your father make tawbah or your mother at the age of 40 or 50 you can live till then don't do that and Allah loves the youth who are obedient why because they have every reason to go wrong when you are young you know you're foolish you don't have experience you can sin easily you chose not you chose to live by Allah so your faith mashallah is tested here they were really tested by a king who wanted to kill everybody who believes in Allah. They ran away and Allah gave them rahmah through sleep. As I said, I'm going to just give general overlook. The details I leave for questions and answers. The second one is the test of wealth. A man with two gardens and in between the gardens there is a river. And you know how important water is for life. Allah gave him a river, Nahar. Nah, river, not just Sungai or small. No, it was a huge river. And he had two gardens full of all what land can produce, mashallah. Instead of thanking Allah, he attributed success to himself. Like most people. Instead of saying, Alhamdulillah, this is from Allah. You start saying, I worked hard. I did this. I made this. And that's it. Allah will take everything back. The third test is the test of Musa السلام, with the good man. Now Musa السلام, thought since he was the prophet of Allah and messenger, given a book, Tawrat, he should be the most knowledgeable person on earth. Allah said no. Being a prophet doesn't make you necessarily understand other things. Khidr السلام, to me represents Qada and Qadr that even prophets can't understand. Destiny. How do things go in your life? You may not even understand why they go this way. You wanted right, you ended up left. That is Khidr. Khidr represents Qada and Qadr. Even, even a great prophet, السلام, like Musa, السلام, cannot understand. And I'm going to the details in short one. So that's the test of knowledge. You think you know, we're going to test you. So Musa السلام, ended up realizing he doesn't know much. There is another level of knowledge called ilm laduni. 
علم given by God straight to the person. No teacher. No teacher. You don't need a teacher for this type of ilm. But this is 1% of knowledge. The 99% you need to acquire it. Otherwise, children stop going to school. You, you yourself don't come to this class. I have to stop teaching. That's it. You cannot say, well, Sheikh, I belong to that category. You don't, by the way. Because 1%. Out of 100, maybe 1. And usually those people, they will never say, we know. Through ulama, they don't say, I know. They are always humble. The last test is the test of power. When you have power, you are king. And kings used to be kings, huh? Not like today. I feel sorry for them. They just sit on the chair. That <laughs> bear. King, king. He's not a king unless he goes for war. Jihad, jihad. These are kings. Dulkan was a great king. Not, so, not only great, he was so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him kingdom to the east and west of earth. Yet he never wronged anyone. So you can rule, and he is not Alexander the Great. We will talk about him later on. Of course, everybody wants to be Alexander because he's European. Actually, he was Yemeni. You'd be amazed. That's why they're pounding Yemen. It's the hatred to everything Arab. They're bombing Syria, Yemen, Iraq. I have some interesting information for you. You know Aristotle? Aristotle copied from the Arabs. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher. He he, and he doesn't deny, he admits, he said, I learned from the Arabs this. And if I tell you what he learned from the Arabs before Islam, because Aristotle was before Islam, you'd be amazed. I am reading certain things lately. Allahu Akbar, why these things are hidden? I told you because the Western agenda of dominance requires that Middle East knows nothing. Well, subhanAllah, all civilizations come from there. Anyways, so like here, they rather say Durkarnain is Alexander the Great, and we know Alexander the Great come from Macedonia, which is Europe, in Europe. Alhamdulillah is not even Western Europe, it's Eastern Europe. Macedonia is near uh, Kosovo, Bosnia. Wake up, my brothers and sisters. The world is not the way we were taught. That's why the Quran corrects many historical political, economic, name it. Things that you have, you and me have been taught from childhood. So please open up Surat Al-Kahfi, Surah 18. And from now on, inshallah, when you read Surat Al-Kahfi every Friday, you will realize the importance of this Surah. It reminds you of the four major tests in life. One of them will happen to you, at least. One of them. If all of them come your way, Allahu Akbar. May Allah be with you. Ask Allah just not to test you in your faith. Because most people tested in their faith, they give up. They give up. That's it. Okay. We also said something very important about this surah. Please open verse 19. Verse 19. Surah 18, verse 19. Just remember, 18, 19. And we said, the middle word, when you count the words of the Quran and split them into half, the half is, that word right there. In Arabic means, let him be kind. So Islam is all about kindness. The middle word of the Quran, if you count the words of the Quran from Surah, from the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha until the end of Surah Al-Nas, the middle word is that one. Word, not ayah. 
I didn't say verse. Words, words. Kalima. <coughs> for example, for example. If there, is, if there are one million words in the Quran, word number 500,000 is You got it? What does that mean? Because this is the book of Allah. Everything is in order. That's what Islam is all about. It's about being kind. Kind doesn't mean being weak. Again. Kindness to some people means weakness. No. Kindness is to try to deal with people with a better way than they did with you. As much as you can. That's all. But that doesn't mean you don't do justice. You don't punish the criminal. You don't kill the oppressor. No, that doesn't mean that. Otherwise, Prophet Muhammad would have not fought at all in his life. Because many of us mix between uh, terms. Because, again, we don't... Uh, we are weak. We are weak. That's why we need a more child. Okay, any question about this more before I go into details? Anyone? All right, so we cover quickly, cover Surat, uh, the story of the people of the king. They were youngsters living in a city where the king himself claimed to be God. A prophet taught them that Allah Azza wa is the true God. So they became believers. They had every reason to hide their faith or to delay their faith. They refused. They made a decision to run away from the king. The king, of course, sent his soldiers to kill every believer. And they were wanted. When they reached a cave, they asked Allah for protection and for rahmah. They said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan this is a very important dua. Memorize it, please. Oh Allah, give us from your way, your way. Up to you, up to you, Ya Allah. Give us a rahmah. We don't know what is this rahmah. So when you ask Allah, ask Him rahmah, and that's it. Don't try to be clever with God. For example, when you ask Allah rizq, just ask rizq. Don't say how much. <laughs> because he may give you more than you need, but you stopped it. He was going to give you 10 million, you said 1 million. See, now you are. All you wanted to say, Ya Rab, for a sister, Ya Allah, give me a good husband. A husband who will respect me, who will help me to be a good Muslim, who will help me to be a good wife, good mother for my kids. Don't try to, he has to have blue eyes, I don't know what. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Same thing for you. Just say, oh, Ya Allah, give me a gift from you. That's it. Leave it up to Allah. When you try to play uh, smart with Allah, then you will see. So they said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. Any rahma. Ya Allah, give us rahma. Look at these youth. They're looking for rahma, not for risky, not for money. They are youngsters and their mind is with Rahmah of God. They are not with material things. They are not asking anything material. They are not even saying, Ya Allah, good wives for us to marry. No. Rahmah. Give us Rahmah, Ya Allah. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyi' lana min amrina rashada. And Ya Allah, make out of our amr, this, this, this uh, matter of us that we are running away, Give us Rashada, guidance. So they ask two things. They ask Rahma and Rashad. MashaAllah. So what did Allah do? Rahma came through sleep. I will make you sleep for 309 years. Allahu Akbar. Sleep is Rahma, yes. You know, do you know that Allah's Rahma is amazing? I'll give you an example. It's Rahmah of Allah that you, brother or sister, were absent that day from that thing. 
whatever thing. For example, it was Rahma that you missed your flight because you're supposed to be at, on MH370. At that moment, you were so angry and you start blaming even your wife. It's because of you that I'm late. I missed the plane. When you hear the plane, disappear. Ah, now you go and say, it's because of you I'm still alive. <laughs> no, but you don't say that. You don't say that because of ego. You see what I mean? It was Rahmah of Allah that you were not that there because you are hot tempered and you would have fought and destroyed everything. It was the Rahmah of Allah that you were not in that car because everybody in that car got killed. Examples. So the Rahmah of Allah is not the way you want it, it's the way He wants it. And He wants nothing but good. Remember this. When Allah delays your marriage, brother or sister, it's Rahmah in disguise. It's just you don't understand. Just trust Allah. For God's sake, you fly with, you don't even know how does the, uh, the, this one pilot looks like. You don't know if he's taking you to your destination or to the bottom of the Indian Ocean. And you go with him, you trust him. You don't even know him. This doctor, you don't even know if he's a fake doctor or not, but you're having heart surgery. This, this lawyer, maybe you tell all your secrets to him or her, they go tell it to your enemy. You still tell them all. But Allah Azza wa Jalla, you don't, know, you don't want to trust. Big problem. The one you know, he will never hurt you. When does Allah hurt you? When you're wrong. He puts you in Jahannam. That's all. Because you deserve it. But when you are trying your best, you're trying your best. You sin and repent. He doesn't hurt you. The fact that he still gives you life is a proof. Otherwise, he will smash you like a bug. They found you just smash like that. They don't even know what happened to you. Allah is merciful. He's not like us. Allah is patient. Very patient. One of the names of Allah is as sabur Not Sabir. Sabur. Very patient. The moment he says you, that's it. So remember this. So the Rahmah of Allah came through sleep 309 years. So they ask Allah, Ya Allah, give us mercy. The mercy was not by them going and killing the king. No, let the king die. 309 years, by that time the king is gone. Not only his, his kingdom is gone. While you are enjoying the sleep, and he turns you. Allah says, وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ And we used to turn them on the right and the left. The interesting thing that we said about this story is that Allah mentioned their dog. There was a dog with them. He mentioned their dog. Now, this is not evidence for you to go and purchase a dog after that. Okay? <laughs> Sheikh mentioned dog. Let's go. <laughs> They had a dog. Allah mentioned the dog. The question now, why did Allah mention the dog? The dog was for protection, number one. He was not a pet. Okay? There are no pets. You need a dog, go by. To do what? Not to go with you to the market, <laughs> but to protect your property. You have big land somewhere and it's dangerous. Purchase a dog but don't let him enter the house. There are conditions. You are a shepherd, go buy a shepherd dog. You are blind, God forbid, and no human being wants to take you. Your own brothers don't want to take you anymore. Then the dog will take you. Sniffing dogs, protection dogs, you know, bomba dogs, no problem. Is this clear? The dog must serve you, you don't serve the dog. In the West, SubhanAllah, the dogs have become masters. Humans work for them. They carry their poop. I saw that with my own eyes. I see this American lady walking her dog in Washington, D.C., near the Congress, the Library of Congress. And it was a cultural shock for me. I was new. Okay, she's walking the dog. I know they walk the dog. But she put her hand in a plastic. She 
carries the poop, puts it in plastic. She doesn't touch it, but I said, wow. Then I was impressed. Later on, they cannot even change the diapers for their kids. They don't want even to have kids, like the French. They want to have dogs, but not kids. Back like there. But they say, why, why Islam is taking over? Because you don't want to have babies. And they, mashallah, the Muslims want to have babies. Like there. <laughs> Except the Malays. One or two hadiths. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What is life without children? Yeah. Your children. Youngsters, don't make your parents' mistake. One or two and stop. Like there. Look at them, look at them. Some of them are looking. I wish my wife is here. <laughs> yeah? I know. That's serious. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Takatharu tanasalu tanakahu fa inni mubahin bikum al umama yawm al qiyamah. Marry and have children because I'll be proud of you on the day of judgment when I show the other prophets the number of my followers. Money. Who said money? The more Allah, the more children Allah gives you, the more barakah Allah will give you. You know why some of you are still poor? Because you have only one or two children. Some of you don't even have. Take me here. I know you are in pain now. Allahu Akbar. So the rahmah came through sleep. <coughs> The dog was mentioned, why? Allah is showing you and me that even if you are a dog, Allah will mention you because you are in a good companionship. That's the beauty of having good friends. You might not be a good, you, you are as low as a dog, but still Allah will mention you because your friends are good people. So how about when you're human, like you and me, yet not good Muslim, but you are in a good companionship like us here, then you have value for Allah. Just simply because you are with the good ones. Rasulullah Sallallahu said about this class. He said, Humu al-qawmu la yashqa bihim jaleez. He was telling the Sahaba that the people of the Quran, those who attend the class like this, based on the Quran, they are the people who no one amongst them will be sad on Yawm al -Qiyam. They said, Ya Rasulullah, even if he did not come for the right reason, even let's say he came to spy on Sheikh Zubay. Takbir. You don't need to spy. I give you a copy of the video. Don't worry. Because I have nothing to hide. YouTube. A example. It's on YouTube. Don't worry about it. Inshallah. If, in case you miss. Like uh, one of my shuyu used to wake up secret service. They sleep in the car. He wakes them up. He said, I'm going to pray uh, Fajr. Follow me. They're sleeping in the... In the in the big uh, van, so he knocks the door, he knows. He said, my children, come join me, at least work for your akhirah. They were given uh, duty to look after this uh, re uh, record, whatever he said. So he knows, he goes to them and wakes them up. He knows they are in the car. He said, I'm going to the masjid, come, pray with us, Salatul Fajr. Back there. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah, even if that man or that woman came for the wrong reason, maybe one of you came to marry tonight, today. Insha'Allah, what is wrong? What is wrong? There is nothing wrong with that. Unless you are married. Takbir. <laughs> Let's say someone is, alhamdulillah, single, and maybe he finds a good wife today here, or a good sister find a good brother here. Alhamdulillah, let it be. But they didn't really come for Sheikh Zubair's class. Back there. Or one of you didn't come. Actually, had it not been your mom, you wouldn't be even here. You know what I mean? It's your dad, your mom, who forced you to be here. And the proof you are fighting to stay uh, away. You are sleeping. <laughs> now you know why I drink coffee. So that I don't you, don't, you think I don't get tired like you? Maybe I get more tired than you. Maybe one of you came. I have nothing to do. So let me go. Makan. There is makan in the masjid. After that, uh, you know. So Rasulullah said, even if they come for that reason, 
as long as they are in the companionship of the Quran, Allah will bless them and give them maghfirah. How about the person who comes sincerely to seek knowledge? Even more pahala. Subhanallah. That's the beauty of purifying the intention. Whenever you're going to a class like this, say, oh, I'm going just for that. If there is something else you want to give me beside that, fine, let it be. It could be dinner, it could be uh, makan, it could be knowing new brother or sister, you know, it could be something, subhanAllah, you never know. You never know. It could be counseling, a word of wisdom that the Sheikh may say, it touches you, moves you, although the subject is about the people of the cave, you never know. Is this there, inshallah? So the fact that Allah mentioned that dog, he's not encouraging us to have dogs, but he's saying, even a dog that in Islam, you know, there are conditions to have dog, still Allah has mentioned that dog. And the Quran said, وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعَيْهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ He was sitting like this, look. بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعِي The dog sits like this, and that's how we should not pray. Your elbows should not touch the floor. That's position of a dog. What touches the floor when you pray, when you do sujood, is your palm. This part. That's all. And your fingers must be towards the qibla. Not like this, and not like this. Do you see me? Like this. And straight, straight. Your hands are straight. Your fingers are straight. Don't do that like this. When you pray, Allah, when you do sujood. Okay. This was the, alhamdulillah, Allah saved them. We said that they were so, here is the proof that they didn't die, is that their beards and hair grew. If you die, your beard doesn't grow. Your hair doesn't grow. Yes, that's it. But if I leave you alone for a few years, your hair will go long. Your beard will go long, your nails also. So when they got up, they look at each other, they got terrified from each other. Ru'ab, <laughs> the word is not khawf, it's ru'ab. Ru'ab is terror. They got so scared from each other. Imagine that, I leave you young, we got up uh, old, very old. And the hair, and the nails were too long. Then they realize, who are you, who are you, I'm, 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 okay, okay. Then they ask, how long do you think we have slept? One of them said, yawman, or ba'da a day or two. <laughs> day or two, Mr. 309 years. And here is the proof. They sent one of them, they said, okay, let's send one of us, only one, with our silver currency. Warik, here is in verse 19, look at it. وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ قَالَ قَائِنٌ مِّنْهُمْ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ 19. Likewise, Likewise, the Quran said, We awaken them from their long deep sleep, that they might question one another. A speaker from among them said, How long have you stayed here? They said, we have stayed perhaps a day or part of the day. They said, your Lord alone, your Lord alone. Here is faith, here is aqidah. Here is where you need faith. Your Lord alone knows best how long you have stayed here. So send one of you with this silver coin of yours to the town and let him find out which is the good, lawful food. This is what I stress upon. I told you, don't eat halal only. Eat good, healthy food. Islam never told us eat halal. Islam told us eat healthy, halal food. Why we stop only at halal? Halal is one thing. Healthy, halal is another thing. I will explain shortly, inshallah. Remind me uh, uh, questions and answers. So send one of you with the silver coin of yours to the town and let him find out which is the good lawful food and bring some of that to you and let him be careful and let no man know of you let him be careful and kind and
So what do we learn? What do we learn from this story? <coughs> we learn that not all of us need to go shopping. <laughs> Everybody loves shopping. Sometimes the whole family is going shopping. Even grandpa and grandma. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to that old man and woman on a wheelchair? Oh my God! What is this? Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Turn it on. Thank you. So. They said one of them. One goes for shopping. The rest wait. Why? <laughs> Especially during fear. Not everybody needs to go. One. And they commanded him to be kind and careful. Because sometimes when you are agitated and not kind to people, people start being suspicious of you. And then they follow up. Then. They will find out who you are. So, when he went with that coin and showed it to the market people, they said, this is treasure. This type of money has value, a lot of value. This is a treasure. And the king that was on, the, the picture of the king that was on that money, they said he died 300 years ago, this king. This is treasure. That's how they realized they slept. So that's the evidence. When he went back, they didn't have guys. We didn't sleep for one day or two or few days. The whole city has changed. I just, I remember Kuala Lumpur when I first landed. The tallest building in Kuala Lumpur was Maybank. <laughs> that the year? Yes. The tallest building. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm that old. Take me here. <laughs> the tallest building you had, Subang Jaya, was like a big airport. Now it's just <laughs> toys. Amazing. So look how in less than, what, 20, 28 years, many things have changed. How about in 300 years? Yes. So, subhanAllah, things can change dramatically in 50 years, let alone in 100, 200, 300 years. So they realized, oh my God, that's true, we slept for 309 years. Now, don't ask me why nine, okay? Some of you, you better think about the question before you ask. <laughs> I don't welcome what called hand clever questions. I will make comment on that. Like me. Especially why? I hate why. Say how, when. That shows submission. Why Allah allows them to marry up to four? It's not my problem. It's Allah who said that, not me. Like me. Hey, I never heard the question like this. Why only 2.5% zakat shake? Why only? Why not? You know? <laughs> ah, because it's not in your advantage. The fitna of wealth. <laughs> Why shake only 2.5%? We should give 50%. I didn't hear a Muslim saying that yet. You got it? But some of you feel five daily prayers is too, too much. Why not 50? Ah, like Allah commanded Prophet Muhammad on day one. 50, yalla, 50. 50 or Jahannam. You better do five and be quiet. Because it, it's supposed to be 50. What? Yes. Five and you still... Five only prayers per day. And you still find it difficult. What type of... Human being you are. Not Muslim, just a human being. La ilaha illallah. May Allah forgive us.
Allah gives you 24 hours daily free to live. You cannot give 50 minutes. Total, total. If every salat is 10 minutes. If every salat with wudu is 10 minutes. Because your prayer, mashallah. Hussein Bolt, Allah Akbar, Salam Alaikum. La ilaha illallah. So that's the beauty of this. So Alhamdulillah, they passed the test. But you see, they just ask Allah. Any form of rahmah, Allah is up to you. So Allah said, okay, you trusted me. He made them sleep. He made them sleep. That's the first lesson. The second lesson, big test of wealth. It starts from verse. <coughs> What, uh, 32. Go to verse 32, please. Before we go 32, I want you to understand something. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this test of faith, He also tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this surah what to do. Telling the Prophet what to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is telling you and me as well. Because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our example. Allah said, for example, in verse 28, look at verse 28. There, same page. Same page. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا O Muhammad, O Muslims, keep yourselves patiently with those who call on their Lord. Praising Allah, doing dhikr, doing good deeds, Seeking knowledge like you and me. Morning and afternoon. So we are supposed to pray and do dhikr and learn morning and afternoon. Not just once a week. Sunday 3 to 5. And never see you again. Huh? Yes. Dhikr. Sisters. Brothers. What would happen to you if you don't eat? In 24 hours. You don't die. You don't die. Inshallah. But you will. Tell me, youth, what will happen to you if you don't eat for 20, 24 hours? 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. You don't die, but you become very weak. Right? Dehydrated. No energy. How about your soul? If you don't make liquor of Allah, if you don't pray, what will happen to it? The only difference is you don't pay attention to the soul when it gets weak. But the body, you feel it. Because you are too much into the body. If you are in too much in the soul, you'll be like crazy that I didn't pray my God. Astaghfirullah, how come? Asr is about to come. You, you panic. Yeah, you panic. I didn't give zakat. I didn't give sadaqah today. I didn't read my Quran. Because you are more mindful of your spirit. That is the beauty of the dhikr of Allah. And those who remember Allah. It's like I cannot live without Quran. I cannot live without classes. That's it. Khalas, you, 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 you cannot. Because you tasted what we call the beauty of Iman. Rasulullah said, when a believer tastes the sweetness of Iman, he cannot live without it. That's it. That's why many of us think, Hey, I know that guy, he was in extreme, he became extreme. You don't understand the change, the deep change that happened to him or her. And that's a gift from Allah. You say, but I know her past. She used to be very bad. Yes, I agree. So were many Sahaba. So were many Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with them. They were very, very bad. But they became even caliphs, like Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Khattab was the extreme between his, his jahiliya and his Islam. Allahu Akbar. People don't understand that. Because the change didn't happen to them yet. They will understand only when they go through your sins. Maybe not the same death, but the same, they, 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 they died like you. But not maybe as deep as you were. They can understand now. Because they went through the experience. Have you seen when we watch soccer? We say, why he didn't throw it this way? Penalty. Because you are not inside. 
When you are inside and there is so much trash on you, that five uh, meter, I don't know what, uh, it becomes just like this in your mind. Why? Because you are sitting here in Kuala Lumpur watching, uh, I don't know. Why you should have thrown it this way? Uh, that's how what we do with some brothers and sisters who are under a lot of pressure of life, stress. And we say, they should have been patient. You don't go through that, sister. You don't have that merited problem. That's why you're saying she should have been patient. Just ask Allah not to test you with what other people may be tested with. Ameen. Amen. So, oh Muhammad, all oh believers, be patient with this type of people. These are the type of people you should be with. Doing dhikr of Allah. Praying. Learning the deen. Morning and afternoon. Because that is better for you, O oh Muhammad. Be patient with this type of people. And Allah said, Wasbir nafsaka. Sabar. Because to be good is not an easy thing. Every shaitan in the world is fighting you. Every shaitan in the world is fighting you, sister, when you put hijab. Including your shaitan. When you start praying. When... When you didn't care about Salat al in Masjid, nobody bothered you. The moment you start reading, say, well, what's wrong with you? Even your family members think there is something wrong with you. So you have to be patient. Patience in doing good and persevering. Istiqama. Istiqama. Ihdina salat al mustaqim Why we repeat it 17 times a day? Minimum. This is when you pray no sunnah. 17 times you keep asking Allah, please, Ya Allah, keep me on the straight path. Right. Be careful, O Muhammad. Stay with this type of people and don't look towards the dunya. The dunya will take you away from this good companionship. We have many good brothers, no more, because dunya, job, traveling, is that dunya. Tasabar. Careful. Because Allah doesn't give you many chances. Careful. وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا And let not your eyes overlook them. Sometimes the good people who mean good to you, who love you for Allah's sake, who want to follow you, who want to learn to be with you, you overlook them for people of money. God forbid, for example, if I start overlooking you for tansaries and whatever. I all tell them, you come here, you love me, you come to class. Simple as this. You know me. I don't care who is in front of me. I see you just as a normal human being, even if you are sultan. Like there. And I really don't want to know who you are, by the way. Do you know that? I want to love you for Allah's sake, who you are. Who you are? You are Ahmed, Muhammad, Fatima, that's it. What you do, who you are, what you do, unless you do something haram, I will tell you. But let's say you, I don't know who you are. By the way, who you are? You're son of Adam and daughter of Adam. And you will go back to clay. Remember that. The biggest problem you have is a title. This chair cannot hold you anymore because the title is this. <laughs> and you come to the masjid with your title. You're crazy. You come to Allah's house with a title. Drop it with your shoes. Let's say you are one, three, I don't know who. Put it with your shoes, that title. Even Shaykh Alim, no Shaykh in the Masjid. In the house of Allah, we are all slaves of God. Oh, the yellow carpet and the yellow chair. What is that? Where are you going? Where are you going with all that? You need chair, we give you chair, no problem. But why it has to be yellow? Or red or blue or I don't know what color you like. Takbir! Oh. <laughs> that shares away. I will not change. Takbir! Inshallah. I don't know why I'm saying that. I know actually. Wala tuti' man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina. Here it is. And let not your eyes overlook them. O oh, Muhammad, be careful to overlook others for the dunya. Those who are with you, the Sahaba. 
the good Muslims, your followers, your students, designing the pomp and the glitter of the life of this world. And obey not him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance. Sisters, don't obey your husbands when your husbands don't remember Allah. Huh? Yes, I'm telling you, and they are here listening. And I'm on record. Same thing for you, brothers. Careful to obey your boss who doesn't remember Allah. Your boss is telling you, hide these figures from the, from the, 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 the accounting. You, you, you obey? That's stealing. Helping him to cover certain, I don't know what. Your husband, sister, tell you don't wear hijab. You obey him. Obey him, you will end up in hell. Obey him. But Sheikh, I have to obey. Obey him when he's good. For example, for example, he says, we go visit our mother first in Hari Raya. Here, obey him. Don't say, no, my mother first. <laughs> like me. Oh, Sisters show their strength only when it's against you. But when it's, it goes with their desire, oh, he tells me to take off the hijab. You won't. I don't want, I don't want you to visit your family anymore. You say yes. No. Sorry, my family is my family. Maybe less visit, but you cannot tell me I cannot visit because that's Silatul Rahim. But if he tells you, I don't want so-and-so to visit your house, you don't bring her. Just say, sorry, sister. I meet you somewhere else. But not in my house, because he doesn't want me. I tell her the truth. My husband doesn't want me. Do you understand what I mean? Obey your spouses, your parents, in what is good. What the Sharia requires, no problem. But what the Sharia says, for example, your husband tells you not to pray. Do you? Do you say, oh, Sheikh, because he, he orders me not to pray? No. commanding the Prophet them to be with this type of people, those who truly want to purify themselves, want to pray a lot, want to do good deeds, want to dhikr of Allah, want to, alhamdulillah, be Muslims. And O Muhammad, while you are having patience with them, because it's not easy to be with the companionship of good people, because shaitan wants to destroy that community, of course. And there is no dunya with them. There is no gain except akhirah. There will be people trying to do business and don't look at what they do. Because you will lose this rahmah. Don't overlook them. Don't overlook them. Also, don't desire the glitterings and the beauty of life. Whoever wants to become billionaire, let it be. By the way, you will not get more than what Allah has written for you. Please understand that. Wallahi al if you just let go, do you know how much peace you're going to have in your mind and heart? It's written, your risk is written. Your risk will come to you to your house. People will knock the door and give you money, give you food, give you clothes. It's written. You shouldn't worry for it. You should worry about Allah for praying again. It's raining, look at that. Asr again. SubhanAllah. Ya Allah, grant us rahmah. Ya Allah, grant us maqfira. Ya Allah, grant us rashada. Ya Allah, grant us whatever wishes, good wishes we have in this dunya and akhirah. And Ya Allah, get rid of that dictator in Syria, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and show us amazing things in him. Ya Allah, also our brothers and sisters who are abused in, in Rohingya, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Palestine, Support them, Ya Allah, and be on their side. You are the only one left for them. No one wants to help them. No one is brave enough to stand for them. Ya Allah, stand for them. Amen. Okay. May Allah grant all of you, sisters and brothers, your wishes in dunya and akhirah, inshallah. And look now. Don't follow people of hawa. 
Ah, here is the problem. Don't follow the people of desires. Like what? People who talk only about jewelry. People who talk only about soccer. People who talk only about dunya. Don't follow them. Because they're following their desires. By the time they realize, th death has come. And be careful. One thing, it never gets old with you. You are getting old, it doesn't get old. It gets even younger in your heart. The love of wealth. The love of wealth. You are very old, you're still thinking about dunya. You're about to die. You're still thinking about some more money. Rasulullah warned us in many, many ahadith, for those who attend Wednesday class with me, please come and learn the hadith, inshallah. Even brothers are welcome, inshallah. Provided you let us know, huh? you just don't, don't walk like that. Uh, and, O oh Muhammad, do not follow or obey whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance and who follows his own desires and lusts and whose affair, affair deeds has been lost. You know someone is lost. How? How? Sheikh, how? You know someone, his mother cursed him. You still be with him. His mom made dua against him. His father disowned him. You are his best friend because he gives you money or he makes you fun and happy. Someone who made his mother cry. Every day he offends his mom and you are friend. You are always in the car with him. You will see a car accident, both of you die. Because his mother, he offended his mother. Even if she has never cursed him or asked Allah to destroy him. He offended his mom. You are with him in the car? You crazy? And you know, if you didn't know, that's another thing. No, you know this guy speaks very rudely to his mom. Yet, let, let's go, let's go. And then you go. Say, hey, you, you need to speak nice to your mother. Go apologize. Otherwise, I'm not your friend. This is how. You know someone is lost. He goes to Bomo, shirk. He still be friend. You know, your sister, your husband cheats on you. You still stay with him. You crazy. What are you waiting for? STD? Sexual transmitted diseases? He cheats on you. You caught him cheating. You caught him, he didn't just hear. Alas, that's it. Somebody has broken the line. Marriage is based on confidence and loyalty. Broken, broken. No, Sheikh, I'm giving him a chance. Wallah, you're a fool. You give chance to someone who cheats on you. Someone made mistake. Someone made mistake. No problem, but not cheat on you. person who cheats who must be put to death? Put to death. In Islam we bring him or her, make a hole up to here, storm to them and until they die. But they don't know this. Do you know who will... <laughs> Let me just stick here. May Allah help me. Sometimes I think I am in the Sahaba time. <laughs> I need to slow down. <laughs> no, really, I think I'm with Abu Bakr Siddiq. I love them so much. <laughs> ya Allah. No, no, I mean, think about it. It's not like you made a mistake. You're young and you committed zina. You were married, man. You were married, sister. You can't do that. see what's happening in this society and other societies and as they tell you why Allah is doing this to us why why Allah didn't destroy us so far the question is you know Allah is all merciful okay so this is how the 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 story of test of faith ended up by all Muhammad وسلم, be with the people of faith be patient with them and be careful don't let the dunya, the acquiring of dunya and money and position make you 
forget where you come from and who you are and what Allah created you for. What's your purpose of life? Purpose of life is to worship God. So the risk is written. And the risk is not just money. Risk means wife, the wife you marry, the husband you marry, the children you're gonna have, the, the life, the friends, the ilmu. Don't think about risk only financial. Allah may not give you money, but give you good health until you die. What do you do with billions of dollars when you are? With oxygen tanks. What do you do? Yalla. Tell me. What do you do? Yalla, here, here are millions, but you cannot even. But alhamdulillah, you still walk. You go out, you come to class, you drive your own car. Is there any more great ni'mah than Islam and being in a class like this? It's not given to anyone. Think about it. The second now, test. The test of wealth. Allahu Akbar. Careful when Allah gives you money, my brothers and sisters. There are people, subhanAllah, instead of thanking Allah for giving them money and, and retire a little bit for akhirah, no. You see them doing more into the dunya and disobey Allah. For example, had it not been for the money they have, they wouldn't be traveling to Bali and to uh, Bangkok to play golf, actually, so that girls carry their cart or whatever they you call that and do things later on with them. Not, doesn't mean all of them do that. Okay, but just to be clear. But had it not been for the money, that person wouldn't sin. Because if he was beggar, he would be busy begging, not busy committing zina or drinking alcohol or doing something haram. You, you got it? So careful, sister, when Allah gives you money, careful. It, you were so simple and humble before money. Now we cannot even meet you. Because you look up. And when you look up, you will knock your head with something in front one day. Look in front of you and be humble. So wealth. This man, Allah gave him two gardens, property. The best property you can ever have is land. It will never go down. The property of land. Buy land if you are smart. If you are smart, buy land, forget it. But the moment you sell it, you give zakat. A piece of land that used to be KLCC land. It used to be, I don't know what. Now go, go try to buy it. Just 100 meter of, you know. The, the, the Chinese are doing this. Chinese non-Muslims now, they follow the Jews. They buy land, forget it. One day will come. Because they think of generations. We think only me. Me and that's it. Don't do that. The Jews are now in occupied Palestine. Don't call it Israel. Now. Don't call it Israel. That's a big mistake. Yesterday I was, I prayed the Isha in one of the masajid of Mutiara, and there was this Amana Palestine, Aman Palestine activity. They were saying Israel. How can you have Palestine when you say Israel? Say the Zionists. Say the Jews. But don't say, is, there is nothing called Israel. There is Nabi Israel, alayhi salam. Yes, he was Yaqub, alayhi salam. There is Bani Israel, children of Israel. But there is no state called Israel. You already defeated, you are already repeating what I want you to say. So I defeated you already in terminology. I won the war. Half of the war I won it. Because you are repeating exactly what I want you to say. Say no. Your, your name is not Israel. Your name is Zionist. Regime or occupied Palestine. So the Jews in occupied Palestine, what they did? They started buying land during the caliphate of Abdul Hamid al-Thani, may Allah have mercy on him, who refused to sell land to them. He understood the game, where the acquiring of the land will take them. It will take them to claim it, and this is exactly what we are in. Careful, my brothers and sisters. Careful. Okay, so this man has been given 
huge pieces of land. In between, there is a river that runs. So the water can be taken from the river for both ends of the land. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave him so many fruits and products, vegetables and this and that. And that's real money. Instead, uh, he had a good friend. He had a very good friend. He always used to remind him of Allah, but he took his friend lightly. You know, you, most of you are wrong when you take the people who love you so much lightly. Like most men take their wives lightly. Takbir, am I right, sisters? Look at them. Yes, most men don't listen to their wives. Because the wife is good only for raising children. No. The wife is really a good, good woman. She's sharing everything with you, my brother. You better listen to her. Seriously, listen. But still do whatever you, you have to do. You don't even listen? You are super dictator? At least pretend you're listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Then still do whatever. You don't even give her that? Take me here. Oh, hi. There are men like that. And there are men the other way, which I don't like. His wife runs everything. Takbir. I hate that man. If you are that man, you are not my friend. Women listen to them. But don't let them run the show. Because they are not good in running the show. Takbir. Yes. What, you want to fight? Let's fight. <laughs> You are good at home. Outside the home, you are not good. I mean it. Sheikh old school, yes. Classic, not just <laughs> antique, how about that? <laughs> Allah made women for the inside of the house. He made men for the outside of the house. Alpha becomes Romeo, Romeo, Alpha becomes uh, Omega, whatever. Alpha Romeo, I don't know from where I don't know. <laughs> In my mind, the car, Alpha Romeo. The <laughs> alpha becomes Omega, Omega becomes Alpha. Big problem. Big problem. Men, Allah made them to be, to run the affairs of the family from outside. The women let them. It's their kingdom. Don't let them. We talk about that in, in, uh, in parenting, inshallah. And how to run the family. So, Either we don't listen to them at all, and sometimes, subhanAllah, the truth is with what your wife has been telling you, and you never saw it. Or we let them run the show, the whole show, which is wrong. Later on we talk, inshallah. Instead of listening to his best friend advice, who all he told him, don't attribute the success to yourself. Just say, this Allah has given me this, Alhamdulillah. Allah has been so generous. He has given me this wealth. He said, no, I made it. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to him? His friend reminded him that, look, thank Allah who out of a drop of sperm, he made you who you are and gave you so much. I mean, you should be proud of a friend who always remind you of Allah. He didn't get it. So he said, no, I worked very hard. I have done this. I have done that. One morning he came, he found nothing. Everything was destroyed. Flood came, destroyed everything. Zero now. The land became barren. The, 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 khalas. Yallah now. No one cares about your land now. No one wants to buy it. Even you give it for free, they don't want to take it. Free. Please take my land. He says, no. What do I do with that land? Nothing. See? There are people like that. Instead of thanking Allah and sharing, that's why Allah says, you keep the ni'mah by sharing. You want to keep any favor of Allah on you? Share it. Knowledge? Share it. Uh, Allah gave you money? Give sadaqah and zakat. Allah uh, gave you good health, pray and fast. Allah gave you skills, give some time to people. 
Allah gave you family, visit them. Don't just expect them to come visit you. You go visit, no problem. They be happy. Oh, so and so came, mashallah. That's how you keep the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, after this lesson, Allah gave us another lesson. What is it? Which is verse 45. O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, put forward to them the example of the life of this world. It is like the water rain which we send down from the sky. Like now, the rain came. When the rain comes, what happens to the green? What happens to the plant? They, they remain green. If there is no rain, what happens to the plants? They turn yellow, dry. Dunya is like that. Wallahi, dunya is like that, my sisters and brothers. At one time, listen, even when money keeps coming, the rain, the rain is money, the money keeps coming, but you are too old. You're super rich. Money keeps coming. You have factories, they're working, people are... But you are no more like young. When you were young, you were enjoying traveling. Now you can't even travel. You used to go even on your special private plane. No more, you can't. You're too old. You even forget. You depend on people to remind you things. That's the dunya. But you were not ready. You were denying good deeds until the end. Allah says, Rasulullah says, that the best deeds Allah loves is to when you do when you are young and and rich, rich. When you are rich, meaning when dunya is coming to you, you start giving. That is the best sadaqah. Not when you are weak and sick. When you are healthy and rich, do good. Because the shaitan is telling you not at that moment. When you are weak, even shaitan reminds you. Say, I'm sorry, I, I, I messed you up all your life, so you go do something good. Even him feels sorry for you. Wake up, my brothers and sisters. Okay. So, that is the dunya, he said. But there is something better than the dunya, acquiring the dunya. What is the dhikr of Allah? And that's true. Okay. You work so hard, even double job, second job, third job, part-time, whatever, to make some money. Good, you made the money. You take it with you when you're done. No, very good. But the same person like you, or you yourself, instead, you had some time for Allah every day. You had time for Quran class like this. You had some time for dhikr. You had some time, mashallah, for salat and this and that. Quran, to read between you and Allah. Qiyamun layl, part of the night you give to Allah. What happens to you? Yama I mean, when you die, when death comes, what do you say? Alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbi, please accept whatever I did. You are letting go, you're going back to a better life, inshallah, knowing that you did good. Let's say death will come to you at the age of, let's say, 60 or 63, like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Between Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who died at 63 and another man who died at 63. Example. Who did best? Don't take the Prophet because he's the best example. Take any one of us. One, mashallah, prayed five times a day. Attended classes at least at least three or four times a week. They read Quran one page or two per day. Never stop. And someone, no. Played God. Made money. CEO, 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 CEO. Every company gives him CEO. Then, death came to both. Who do you think will be, inshallah, easy, easy to let go? Death. This one. Alhamdulillah, he has that. Now he realized, Alhamdulillah, Allah made my faith this way. But it was his choice, actually. Please remember, it was your choice. It's your choice to wear hijab, sister. Allah doesn't want to force it on you. It's your choice to come to classes like this, my brothers. Careful. Dunya is short. Very good. So the test of wealth. Allah gives you wealth and tests you. What do you do with it? Have you ever seen someone dying because he donated something? Okay, let's say now, now, you have 100 ringgit. And I take by force from you 2.5. Do 
Do you know how bad you are when I take by force, 2.5? Because I said by force. I say, sister, there is a poor guy there. We need to give him the cat. You're supposed to come without me telling you. Okay, I say, okay, here. Because I'm the governor. Yalla, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and give to him. Does any one of you die? Maybe, <laughs> by the way. If you are so stingy, why 2.5%? <laughs> Allah Akbar, but inshallah you will not die. And they say, relax, look, there is no heart attack by giving 2.5%. And you go home and say, yeah, I didn't die. Alhamdulillah. That beer, ah. You got it? You don't die when you give. And that's the problem of raising the children, not giving, just taking. Be careful. Make sure you give to the children to drop in the box of the masjid. Sometimes parents do this. Mashallah, they are generous, but they never teach the children. Say, come my son, give this to the masjid. Make them give. Because when they just take, ooh. I told you about the stingiest person. When he was dying, he, he fell into the water. And he was blah, blah, blah. He doesn't know how to swim. Everybody says, give me your hand, give me your hand. He doesn't want to give. <laughs> One alim passed by. He said, wait, wait, I will help him. He said, take my hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he said, take my hand. Then the man took his hand because he's used it to take. He's not used to give. So they were using the wrong word with him. Even when he was dying, you should say, T take my hand, not give, give me your hand. <laughs> like the hand. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So Alhamdulillah, the alim was smart enough. <laughs> that is the problem with us when we don't learn how to give. Now you know why Allah wants you to give? Because one day you will give the whole dunya behind you. Here. Here. Yes. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Give ilmu, give knowledge, give the smile, give the <coughs> clothes. You don't die. You don't die. Give your jacket to someone shivering. Give it your own jacket. Allah will give you better. Don't worry about it. You know, it's my best jacket. He's shivering. You are not shivering. There is this Algerian brother. I say Algerian because I'm proud of him. He was in... He, it was on, um, on Canadian TV. You know, on buses that are now for security reasons, there are cameras. Cameras everywhere, by the way. Do you know your, your TV has camera? Especially your smart Samsung TV. They see it, they know who you are, what you are watching. Yeah. Careful. Samsung TV, they know Karim what he does at home. And I know why. They call me sometimes. Takbir. <laughs> Samsung. Sheikh Zubair, this is Samsung. You have student called Karim? I say yes. <laughs> Takbir. <laughs> <coughs> That's a little bit obvious. But, <laughs> but serious, serious. Even your, 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 your TV, they, 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 there is camera hidden to you while you're watching. That's why when you're watching with your spouse, be careful what to do. <laughs> you're spying on you too. So, uh, he saw a homeless in the bus with a shoe that is wet and cold for, for weather of Canada. So he took off his shoe and gave it to him. He said, my bus will drop me here, near my house. I can walk in and in the ice and alhamdulillah. That was on the street, on the, on the news. <coughs> Later on, the news came to him and asked him, why you did that? He said, I'm, you know, I'm a Muslim, and this man, you know, I could see he's homeless already, and his shoes were very punctured and not good. And, and that's not nice. SubhanAllah, it was big news. That was more than a million speech about donation in Islam, and especially when they knew he was Muslim. It was SubhanAllah in the media. Small act. He didn't even know until he watched himself. Then he found the media coming, talking to him, and this and that. He said, No, we Muslims, small kindness. Hey, don't do that in front of TV. Okay, <laughs> 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 I will never accept. 
Allah, it was genuine, uh, genuine, and Allah Azza wa accepted and made it broadcast. It's on YouTube, by the way. Go, Algerian TV issue in Canada. Like <laughs> <laughs> me here. And it was not me, like me here. <laughs> because I've never been in Canada. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the beauty of, of test through wealth. Careful. Allah may give you, but you fall like this man. You know now why you want, you know, you know now why Allah doesn't give to some people. He doesn't want them to go to hell like this man. That's why Allah doesn't give you. Sheikh, I've been trying to work hard to get money. Allah will not hold you accountable for being rich or poor. You don't go to Jahannam because you were poor. You go to Jahannam because you were not sabah or you were not shukur. Ah, he gave you wealth, you end up in hell with Qarun. Sitting with Qarun, burning together. <laughs> Qarun, what's up? He says, what's up? <laughs> what's up, what's up? We are burning now, man. You got it? Ah, you might be with Bilal radiallahu and enjoying Jannah. <laughs> ah, now you, now you love Bilal. Bilal was poor. His wife was rich. She was the sister of Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu Do you know what does that mean? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam broke the nonsense of that jahili society those days where only noble marries a noble. He told Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman, tell your sister to marry Bilal. He intervened. And when her brother went to her and said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling you to marry Bilal. She said, I will obey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Bilal? Yes. Black slave? Yes. But she didn't look at him as black slave. She looked at him as companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who, who's going to do that among our girls today? But she lived very happy with him. Who will not live with the first Mu'addin of Islam? Do you know what does it mean? The first Adhan was made by him. Every Adhan in the world, until Yom Al-Qiyamah, he has a share of it. That's what it means. The Pahala, look, look. Today, we make this Mu'addin, made Adhan, Bilal radiallahu anhu has, has Pahala, has share. Because he was the first. Careful to do any sin the first. Like Qabil, Cain, when he killed his brother, he was the first to initiate killing. So the sin will be always on him. Any murder, any killing in the world, Qabil will get share of it. Anyone who has done something new, good, good thing, new, no one did it before him or her, you will have share, inshallah. Bilal radiallahu anhu was the first one. First man to give a man. The third, mashallah, and time is following us, Musa alayhi salam and a good man. Musa alayhi salam thought, since he is the messenger of Allah, he knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, go, there is a man you will meet. He's not a prophet. He has more knowledge than this. Uh -huh. Okay. Musa alayhi salam was very humble. But he could not keep his questions for himself. Why? Because the man told him from the beginning, you will not be able to have patience with me. And that's true. Not easy to follow Alim. You have to know this. Not easy. I'm telling you now. Now, sometimes, sometimes, we don't want you to be close to us. Not because, they, because you can't. There are certain things you can't. You can't handle the ulama sometimes let their students go home early or say, don't meet me in this place. You don't understand. There are certain things you can't comprehend. I'll give you an example. Ab Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu anhu, like me, I'm teaching. Someone walks in now and asks me one question, any question. I say the answer. You understand? And then he leaves. Another brother comes. And ask the same question, but I give different answer. What do you think? Hypocrite, Sheikh. Sheikh is hypocrite. 
Maybe you don't think like that, but you'll be like, the same question, but different people. That's what you are not paying attention to. You think one answer to everybody? Do you think one answer to everybody? No. If you ask me about Salat, yes. But you ask me personal thing. So he said to him, the question was, هَلْ لِلْقَاتِلِينَ مِنْ تَوْبَةً Murderer, does he have tawbah? He said yes to the first one. He said no to the second one. Same question. Yes, Ken. Good. Go. Quick, you're going to make a salat. So, he, the students were like, Sheikh, why you said yes to one person? Same question. He said, Amma al-awwal, the first one, I saw in his face the remorse. He was remorseful. He was already down. He killed. He wants to repent. I saw in the face of the second one anger. He didn't kill yet. He wants a, a green light to go and kill. So I stopped. I prevented him from killing and therefore going to hell. And another life to die. Maybe he's really legitimately angry that you don't have to kill someone when you're angry. But the, the, So that's what you don't see about the fatwa of ulama. They can see the same question from this sister and this sister, different answer. Both of them about marital problems, but different husbands, different conditions. One is rich, one is poor. One is uh, mother, one is not yet mother. One, the husband is wrong. One is the wife is wrong. One is pressure of life on her husband, who is not even educated. One highly educated. Different. Please understand that. So, Musa alayhi salam was warned by his teacher, new teacher that Allah says, go and follow him. And here it shows that titles don't matter in knowledge. In knowledge, no matter who you are, be humble. Musa alayhi salam, prophet of Allah, chosen by God to speak to his people, not hidden, but to seek knowledge. You go learn from this man. For example, uh, in Islam we have this alhamdulillah tradition that you could be the son of the caliph, but you are no more the son of caliph when you are in class. Classroom you are like any other student. Harun al-Rashid brought his son, al mamun who became caliph after him, to seek knowledge from an Imam al-Asma'i. Imam Asma'i was the greatest alim of his time, especially in linguistics, in language. So, Harun al-Rashid wanted his son to really be a knowledgeable man. And he was, by the way. Ma'mun was alim. Alim. At least the leaders those days were alim. Today, Allahu uh, Akbar. Like me here. Tell him, lead us in salat, because if he makes a mistake in the third rak'ah, how to make the fourth, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so, the first lesson to the child, what was it? First, he told his father, leave us now. He's talking to who? The caliph. What was he ruling? Singapore? Something you don't even find in the map with the binocular, you don't find it. He was ruling from China East all the way to Morocco West. That was the caliph. Allahu Akbar. He told him, I would like you to teach my son. He said, leave your son. And Sometimes the parents spoil the children. Wallahi al-Adil is the parent sometimes. Do you know the chicken when it sits too much on the eggs, the eggs get rotten? Takbir! You suffocate them. Sometimes let them. Let them be who you are, who they are. Don't over pamper them. You know mother who cleans so much her children? She's paranoid. <laughs> the children will, the smallest virus, when the mother is not there, will kill them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she was over clinging them. Let your children sometimes, I don't know what. Like me here. Give me your children for one month and you will see. Like me here, one month, don't see them. I don't want you to come. You shouldn't even know where we are. So that you don't come. And then you will see after one month. Like me here. 
They will miss you so much. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I miss you. I love you. They start kissing you every day because I will give them. I show them the stars during noon. Can you see the stars? Right there. Yes, yes. I do believe that certain discipline must be given to children because not good. Not good what they are doing to you. MashaAllah. Okay. Uh, so, he told him to disappear. Huh? Yes. In his class, he is the boss. Although you are caliph, but in my class, I am the boss. This is my classroom. Wow. After a few minutes, Harun al-Rashid, Father, you know, he wants just to come and see if the son is sitting, because he knows his son is, you know, pampered, you know. Son of the caliph, man. He found him instead pouring water to the sheikh. Child abuse. <laughs> Child abuse. <laughs> sheikh. Harun Rashid stormed in. Sheikh, I sent my, my son to seek knowledge like other children. He is pouring water. I can give you many servants and slaves to do that for you. He said, take your son and disappear. That's how he spoke to the caliph. Take your son and leave my class. Uh, he realized. The, the, he said, your son will never learn if he doesn't respect the container of knowledge. Who is the container of knowledge? The alim. He, he's teaching him, I don't need your son, but I want to break the ego. He has so much ego. He has to let that go to learn. So that the other kids also will not. Imagine, imagine, I treat your son uh, differently than other kids. The kids also, I will lose respect because they say, why the sheikh treat him? Because his father is, you see what I mean? Then, so he said, your son will never learn if he doesn't respect the ulama. I just want, I don't need your son to do it. Alhamdulillah, I can do it by myself. Other kids love to do it because Adam and the, but I realized your son is, he said, okay. He said, but he said, okay, at least today I don't want to see you. So the boy saw that his father had to go because the alim said so. The next day, the boy became alim later on. He he was taught that values values before before I teach you alif ba ta tha jim qul wallahu ahad. Are you ready to be humble and simple, or are you going to be I don't know who? Yeah. You know how many people I chased from my class. You lucky I didn't because you are quite uh, humble. That be it. In America, I chase many people, say, get out from my classroom. People know me, ask them. Today, alhamdulillah, you have media. I say, I don't want to teach you. Huh? Because they think they are so important. You have to learn something. You have to be humble first. Otherwise, Allah will never give you knowledge. And the ulama, this is our problem. Our ulama, weak, weak. What's wrong with them? Man, Allah has given you knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. No one is better than you. You, you, so weak. What is this? You don't have to be crazy, but sorry, this is. Do you know a, a doctor is the boss of his clinic? Not even the the one who hired him in the in the hospital can tell him anything. Outside his, yeah, he can call him for a meeting and listen. This is very important, my brothers and sisters. But a manager of, uh, for example, I am a CEO and I have a manager to manage, let's say, this building. I should respect what he does. I call him out of that and talk to him. But don't look down at him in front of his, uh, and that's it. You're killing the job. Time is catching us again. So I am not going to do the details of Musa alayhi salam with al Khedr, but Musa couldn't, alayhi salam, couldn't uh, be patient. Why? Because what he sees is totally different than what he knows. And that is Qada al Qadar. Qada al Qadar, you cannot understand it, even if you are a prophet. You have just to trust Allah. So, but he thought this man is doing. He thought Khidr is doing. That's why he was questioning Khidr. He said, if you want to seek knowledge with me, then there is condition. Don't ask me until I tell you. That's the condition. He told him already, you cannot be patient. You cannot comprehend what I do. He said, please, try me. 
He said, okay, you follow me, but don't say anything. Good or bad, don't say. Difficult, especially for women. <laughs> women not talking when they are angry. I am yet to see a woman, other than my mother, may Allah have mercy on her, say, I mean, who is quiet. And that's why she won always every fight with my father, Ami. Say Ami, may Allah forgive them. Both of them are inshallah in, in their graves. She learned, she knew that it's better not to say anything. Doesn't mean she will not say it. Very smart lady. She will say it later on. Her way. But at that moment when my father is angry, she doesn't say anything. Very smart. Some ladies, they can. She, one word, ten words. Ten words, <laughs> twenty words. That be here. Some familiar look, look, they're laughing already. They know who they are. So he told him, don't say anything. Musa is not going to be quiet. So when Khidr made a hole inside the ship, I thought you're a good man. How can you make a hole? Sabotage. He said, that's one. Not. That's one. That's it. Uh oh Second one? Even more, more, more than sabotage. What was it? <coughs> he catch an innocent child who was playing with other kids, call him son, and slaughter him. Musa alayhi salam went ballistic. I thought you were a good man. What did this boy do to you? You don't understand. That's exactly qada and qada. Why children in Syria are being killed? Why sisters in Rohingya are being raped? Their sons burned in front of them. The husband slaughtered and she will be raped and left alone to, to, to die with that pain, to live with that pain, to have a mental thing. They don't kill her. If they kill her, at least she goes to Jannah, inshallah, with her children. But they leave her live with that. And that's emotionally very stressful. You see what I mean? Okay, why those things happen? Many of you ask me, Sheikh, why children are born with leukemia? Why children die? You know, they have done nothing. That's exactly the question of Musa alayhi salam. You ask him, I thought you're a good man, why you do that? Ah, that's number two. Because the deal was, whatever I do, don't ask until I tell you. So he can't. Number three, now he does something good. Wow. For who? For bad people. Innocent people who did nothing wrong. He did wrong things to them, according to you and me. According to you and me, bad people, I mean good people who have done nothing wrong, like the uh, fisherman and the boy. Fisherman, he sabotaged their ship and they have done nothing wrong against Musa alayhi salam nor Khidr alayhi salam. And the boy was playing as this child, this small kid. He didn't even reach the age of puberty and he was killed. The people who didn't feed us, nor host us, nor dare to care about us for makan, for little rice, you build a wall for them, you fix their wall that was about to fall, let it fall. They're bad people. You got it? Then he just said, you should have asked for some money at least for fixing the wall. Charge them. And he said that. Good or bad, you don't ask. That's not easy, my brother. <laughs> Sheikh Zubair, I want to be your friend for, for a day. I say, okay, you say nothing. You say nothing. How about, <clears throat> no problem. <laughs> but don't say a question. So I walk, I go to coffee bean and slap someone. <laughs> You may not say something, but you WhatsApp it. <laughs> she has slept so much. Allah. That's already one. Number two, go find a hot young girl looking for haram, zina. Sheikh Zubair gives her money. Prostitute. Big paper like this. Prostitute. Sheikh Zubair goes in front of everybody, give her some money. You don't understand. <laughs> she, I'm going to use toilet. Yeah, I'm not going to use toilet. You're going to use <laughs> Already, number two. You didn't say by word, but you said by. And then I will do something, you know, 
then you already you fail. You fail. Why? Later on when you know why I did that, you'll be like, maybe that guy who I slept doesn't just deserve a slap. If you know what he did, you would have killed him. I just slept him. How about that? Or I slept him so that no one hits him. Halas. Because there were people going to kill him. I slept, I saved him by doing that. So I, I sucked their anger in my slap. Actually, he should thank me because they were going to kill him. Example, if no one stood up. But you don't understand these things. That qada and qada of Allah. That girl, when I give her money, I'm telling her, don't do zina. Go home. You have enough for today. And that's the only way she went home. Because she had enough money. At least for one day she will not commit zina. Allah may forgive her. That happened in the hadith of Rasulullah And And many things. But you can't understand because simply, that's how qadr and qadr works. Why innocent children go to leukemia, cancer? Good people go to jail. Ulama be killed. And bad people get promoted. The more you steal money, the more chances you have to become politician. That like beer. I mean, right? But you don't understand that this is how Allah, it's a test. It's all tests. You are being tested here. You are being tested here. You're being tested here. Oh, oh. We leave this for next week. I know because we don't have time. And it's a beautiful story about the Karnet. I tell you more details about him, inshallah. For now, I take one or two questions. One or two questions before we pray, inshallah.